Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today with our sponsor Weaving Through Homeschool Life, we are going to have some fun and hand dye some 100% wool roving. This roving is Nitpick's Wool of the Andes Worsted Roving. Uh, it's 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It takes up dye beautifully and it's one I really, really love spinning. Right here you can see a hank of the roving, but you can also see this loosely wound ball that I created. And this is going to be the focus of our project today. To create this ball first, I'm going to go to the end and untie it, um, and then spread out my roving. I want to make sure that there are no twists in it. Um, because if the roving is twisted like that, that will sort of create a resist point. And given that um, by winding it into this ball, that is going to have a lot of resist in it already, I want to minimize the additional twist in the roving to begin with. And there's really minimal twist in it. So to start, Rather than wrap, wrapping it around my hand, because that'll introduce twist, I'm going to sort of roll it um, into a ball. And I'm not pulling. I'm trying to be as loose as I possibly can. And you can see I'm twisting the ball to avoid introducing more twist into here. and. Yeah, I'm just trying to as loosely as possible create this ball of roving. Now, we have two balls of roving for this video. And there is, and at the very end, I'll just tuck that end under a little bit. We have two balls of roving right here, which are under no circumstances identically wound. Um, I expect that there will be differences in the way that these will absorb color from, from a many of different factors based on how they are located in the pot and yeah really that's probably the biggest factor because they won't fit, I mean if they fit side by side that'll introduce some resist. If they're sort of one on top of the other like this that could introduce some other resist. But I am really, really excited to see what kind of patterns and color breaking and everything we will see when we dye this roving. I am here with my dedicated dye pot and I'm not going to be measuring the water today. I want there to be enough that we can cover our wool. I'm placing these balls next to each other and just lightly pressing so we can start soaking up some water and I can already tell that I want to add some more. So I don't leave any water behind. Here's some that I was using, just tap water as a pre-soak earlier. And yeah, I'm filling up this pretty full. I want the, there to be plenty of water to access the fiber. I don't want it to feel compressed. The pot is mostly full now. Um, the, these balls are sitting on the bottom and I feel like it's not like horribly compressed but they definitely are also at a surface level too. I'm thinking that I might change my overall thought. We kind of have two pockets here. Maybe I should start off adding two different colors, one on either side and sort of see what happens. Hmm. All right, we still have no heat in here. Um, but off camera, I mixed up a half teaspoon of Wilton's teal in half a cup of water and a half teaspoon of Wilton's violet in half a cup of water. And I'm now going to turn on the heat and we're going to pour this teal on one side. and this violet on the other. They may mix. Um, I'm not sure. I'm going to go again, just sort of rinse out. 
even though we are using food coloring today, everything, um, like this pot is a dedicated dye pot, so everything that I'm using is dedicated dye equipment and not used for food. But yeah, I'm a little excited to see what might happen. There's also no vinegar in here right now. Um, and yeah, I'm just really, really excited to see where this might go. Um, in a little bit, I might, like as I add vinegar, I might press the top down a bit, but I think that we have a potential for something really cool. And I do see some of the teal is coming around the side, um, but yeah, I will come back and check in once we've started actually heating. It really hasn't even been like two minutes, and I have to say I really like what's happening. Um, I'm only gonna add like one tablespoon of vinegar to each side. It's not a lot at all. My tap water does run slightly acidic, but um, if things are starting to, to mix and we might see different colors on one than the other, like I see the turquoise and I see more of a blue, sort of average out to be like a blue and this purple, hopefully we'll capture some of these differences before it all blends. Um, I know I'm gonna be needing to add a lot more acid and once we're hot, then I'll start adding some more. But right now, I am feeling really, really excited with how this is disappearing. We're still waiting for things to heat up, but this looks so awesome here on the surface. I'm kicking myself now for not doing a time lapse, so that way we could watch that white disappear. But look, you can see like sort of purple around it with turquoise towards that center. Um, I knew that even if like the teal and purple combined, it could turn into a really cool color, but I'm curious, really curious to see what we might get towards the center. But seeing like these colors soak in through the top is giving me some hope that we might see some colors go all the way through, I hope. <laughs> I'm realizing, I hope I don't end up regretting the amount of dye that I've put in here, but oh yeah, I could always toss in a yarn mop if necessary. But you can see that we're getting some heat. We're starting to see a little bit of bubbles. But I have not pressed this down. I have not touched this. All of this sort of blending has just happened naturally. And as for resist points, there is fiber against this either the two sides. There's fiber against the bottom. And then there's the, the resist of just the yarn itself. Um, oof. I am just so curious if um, we're really just going to have this sort of deeper purple on the outside because of the teal. Um, like what color is over here? Okay, it's sort of like a bluish. Yeah, I feel like that everything has sort of mixed, but it mixed around slowly. So maybe, maybe we'll see something kind of cool, or it'll just be sort of like a deep purple. On the on the outside with just a very few teal hints um, from this top I am not sure but I'll be back in about 10 minutes and we'll evaluate from there we're back and I am definitely holding on to all of my impulses to not just press down on those remaining patches um, I'm curious Ooh, look at that it looks like a lot of our reds have absorbed already because you know this water is looking very very blue um, so I think if I were to press down we would um, you know probably get a lot more of that like blue type color um, but I do want to add more vinegar now what I'm gonna say isn't gonna completely make sense I don't want to add too much blue I'm only gonna add two three four tablespoons of white vinegar. Now, if I'm doing Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight yarn, with this proportion of dye to yarn, I would need about two tablespoons of vinegar and eight cups of water for all of the color to absorb. However, this is roving. Things are gonna take longer. It might take more acid because a lot more of the color will probably bind towards the outside of the yarn. I'm gesturing with my hands and I think <laughs> you can't really see because I'm on the sides of the pot. I think this is an eight quart pot and we have a lot more than eight cups of water in here today. 
a significant lot more. And so, you know, each time I come back, I'll probably add a little more vinegar and a little more vinegar. If I had started with too much vinegar, then we would probably get a lot of white in the interior. And we might still have white in the, in the interior, but the slower that I add the vinegar, the more chance we have of getting some few, at least different depths of color and brightness. I don't know. I'm just really excited to see where this goes. Um, but um, I'll come back in, I think, another 20 minutes and we'll check in. 20 minutes have passed and I mean I would say for me the color on the sides is looking like less um, saturated than it was before um, which is good but we're also at the stage where I am going to not measure the amount of vinegar I'm putting in and I'm just going to do, and on both sides, a nice healthy pour. Now this was enough that like I could feel the level of everything in there rise a bit. <laughs> um, which is fine. I think that that's almost good in a way. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna, the, the heat is on really, really low. And I think at the next checkpoint I might move things a little bit. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> but I'm going to let this go, I think, 40 minutes, and then we'll be back. All right, let's check in on our roving. Right now I'm turning off the heat. I definitely still see, well, on the spoon it doesn't look like much color. If I look down to the bottom of the pot, actually, that's looking fairly exhausted as well. Um, there is definitely a bit of color in there, but there's no question that we have absorbed most of the color. Awesome! So now, I have to be really, really patient. And we want to let this dry completely before we sort of unravel these balls. Um, so I'm just, I've got the heat off, I'm going to set it aside for few hours, maybe even until tomorrow morning, and then we'll open it up. We are completely cool. It's been about a day. Let's remove this roving. Oh, look at that. All of the color is in our fiber. I want to be very, very careful. Normally, when I'm doing one of these sponsored videos, I try to avoid, oh, look at that. I try to avoid spoilers. But I did post one picture um, while the colors were spreading, and I know weaving through homeschool life saw it. Um, but I was just so excited. Thankfully, from the picture, you can't tell anything about this awesome technique. Uh, so let's go and rinse out some of this um, fiber. It's funny, and I'm not quite sure if it's like some saturation, but the colors definitely look a little different on one side than the other. Maybe it's from some of the teal that went in here. I'm not sure. No matter what, I want to make sure not to let the water run over the roving itself. Um, and I'm really just trying to gently rinse this out. Um, I'm not expecting there to be any color bleeding. And I am going to use just a tiny amount of dish soap, just enough to like put a drop on my finger to help rinse this. We are completely cool, so I am using cool water, and I'm very gently pressing in. Oh, flip on there. And I'm gently lifting with a gentle compress. I'm going to do probably just one more wash before I put this through the spin dryer um, to remove a bunch of excess water. And as I put these up on my drying rack, that's probably when I'm going to unravel these balls very, very gently and carefully. Um, but I will come back 
as I'm taking these out of my Nina Soft Spin Dryer. I spun it for about two minutes. Um, and I think this really only worked well because these are in a ball form. Um, I th and so therefore we were able to be really, really balanced. But they came out and they're dry enough that I'm now gonna go off camera, unravel these onto my drying rack, and then I will come and show you what the colorways look like. Each of the balls is represented by four rounds with the outside edge being on the outside and then the inner two representing the innermost portion of the balls. I wish that there was an easy way for me to have unraveled this onto the drying rack with the tripod, but I don't think it would have been really, really hard for me to fit along with it. We got amazing color penetration with a bright teal all the way to some patches of pale blue and pink with some more brighter purples and magentas towards the outside. I am really excited to braid this up once it's dry because I think that that'll give us a really good visual of the gradient overall. But I am really excited and I cannot wait to play around with this more in the future. I have a whole review of the Nina Soft Spin Dryer. But the fiber just comes out so nice and fluffed out of the dryer. It's a tad bit more compressed since we are in the ball, but I know that we are absolutely not felted, and so therefore I'm thrilled. There is no question that we got a stunning gradient here on our roving. I still can't believe how well it worked to hand wind this roving into balls and then dye it. I was really nervous that we wouldn't get color penetration all the way to the center, but we have these magentas, purples, and then turquoise all the way at the other end. The roving is fluffy and beautiful, maybe slightly less fluffy than if I had put it through the spin dryer while it was not wound into a ball, but all things considered, I am thrilled that nothing got felted. I really love this combination of Wilton's Violet and Teal. I was so nervous that the color wouldn't penetrate all the way to the center, and so I hoped and hoped that adding some more blue to the equation would help, and it sure did, and these results are beautiful. I am now starting to get a sense of some acid dyes that break on roving, and so I'm excited to explore this more in the future with a wider range of colors and dye types. Are these two braids perfectly matched? No. The gradients are not identical. I suppose we could wind them into one ball together and then we might get something a little more consistent for the comparison, but there's no question that these can be combined into one spinning project uh, and feel very matched. Of course, you could always combine two unmatched things into one spinning project, but I think you know what I mean. I just can't get over how beautiful these are. You all know that Breaking Wilton's Violet is one of my favorite colorways to dye, but yeah, I really, really like that extra bit of blue and that little bit of yellow from the teal and what it did to the colorway as a whole. Weaving through homeschool life, thank you so much for sponsoring this episode of Dye Pot Weekly. If any of you would like to learn more about sponsoring an episode of Dye Pot Weekly, you can find a link in the video description to the listing in the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. Sponsors get to pick the yarn base, tell me some colors to avoid, and then I design a stunning mystery yarn roving and video with you in mind. The projects are always a surprise, the colors are a surprise, and you get shout outs along the way and then get something to see something and then know that I created it just for you. And it's a whole lot of fun. 
Currently, the only way to get roving hand dyed by me is through the uh, Dye Pot Weekly sponsorship listing. However, let me know in the comments if you would be interested in me um, selling some of the hand dyed roving I create in my videos. I have been keeping it mostly to spin and play with myself, but I am starting to accumulate a bit of a stash. And so if there's interest, then maybe I'll add it to the shop. If you'd like to learn more about any of the items that I used for this project, you can find a bunch of affiliate links in the video description. Subscribe! Turn on notifications so you never miss a new video. And make sure you give this video a like and comment down below to let me know what you thought. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.